Okay, we're gonna do a little project here this afternoon. I bought this power supply um, to run this hot rod Cobra 29, and I needed it because I can run that thing at like 15 point something volts. So the power supply I use for my Anytone is just an old server power supply, which is back here. That thing runs at like 12.6 volts, which is great for just the old stock Anytone. And then there's also a buck converter glued to the top of this thing that runs my motor mouth mall modulator. That thing up converts voltage from 12 up to 30 volts, but that's neither here nor there. I needed a, radio, or a power supply that I could power this radio with at a little bit higher voltage. So this thing is 0 to 20 volts at 20 amps output, and that's more than enough power for that radio. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to parallel circuit this thing off and run multiple radios with this eventually. But one annoying thing about this is if you bump this on accident, like say this much or that much, it could jump your voltage more than a volt. So you could go from like 14 volts up to 16 volts. And I don't want to fry my radio on accident when this thing gets bumped. So this is a 10K potentiometer, just a general run of the mill, cheap piece of crap. And I have purchased a 10 turn 10K potentiometer. So this thing turns, you know, one less than one turn from beginning to end, and that equals zero ohms all the way up to 10,000 ohms. Well, this thing turns 10 times around to do the same work, so it's much more sensitive and allows you to keep your voltage set where you want it without having too much drama. So we'll be putting this in here, and I just wanted to show that. And if you do have one of these Drock power supplies, there's screws along here to get the lid off. Do not undo these screws. These are screws for heat sinks for uh, transistors and voltage regulators. They do not need to come undone. And uh, when you pop the top of this case off, it's kind of interesting. There's obviously the digital readout and a fan that kicks on if it needs to. I've never had it turn on. And then here's that little potentiometer that adjusts the voltage. So I'm just going to reuse these three wires and try to get one of these things mounted in there. I think we have enough space to make that happen. So I'll be back and see if we get this thing done. All right, we're back with an intermediate step. The uh, diameter of the potentiometer, the original one, which is, you can see this little piece of junk. If it'll focus here. The uh, diameter of that hole was smaller than the hole required for this 10 turn potentiometer. But fortunately, the 10 turn fits perfectly here in the corner and it will work just fine. There's no clearance problems inside here once this is all set up. I just used a file to hog out that hole ever so slightly. Don't get aluminum shavings into the inner workings of your power supply, obviously, but yeah, nice and easy. This aluminum is uh, very thin, so no problem there. One thing to note if you're going to try to copy this project as I'm doing it, the uh, common conductor for the potentiometer, for a typical potentiometer is usually the middle pin. So one between here and here might be 2.5 kilo ohms, which means between here and here is 7.5 kilo ohms to make up that total of 10 kilo ohms. So middle pin is common, and then it, you know, it has different resistance between this pin and this one, depending on where you've turned the knob. In the case of this 10 turn potentiometer, the common pin is this back pin, and then it varies between here and here. So from here to here, 2.5 kilo ohms means here to here is 7.5 kilo ohms. So be aware of that. I just verified it using a multimeter. So this used to be black wire to center pin and then yellow and red on either side. So this would be black wire to back pin and then red and yellow to either of these two to pull off the same sort of thing. So anyway, just wanted to let you know. So again, just for clarification's sake, prior to this, the wiring color was red, black, yellow. And now in this new switch situation, the common pin is this back one. So now it's black, yellow, red. I mean, it doesn't really matter red or yellow either way. Turning the knob one way will raise the voltage, and turning the knob the other way will lower the voltage. So we're going to get this installed and get the power supply back together and see if it works. 
So as you can see, that 10 turn pot from Amazon just fits in there perfectly to the point it doesn't interfere and we can get it all put together and uh, we'll test it out. So yeah, it's much larger than the one that was in there, but it does fit and it doesn't interfere or rub on anything. So that's all good. Okay, mission accomplished. I could be really anal retentive and reverse those red and yellow wires because when you turn it this way, it turns the, vol the power up and when you turn it that way, it turns it down. But you know, whatever. The good news is if you happen to bump this thing, it's still pretty sensitive. If you have to bump it, that's a whole volt there when I turned it like half a turn up to 14.8. But the good news is it used to be you bump this thing, you'd change by three or four volts. So now we have a much more controllable situation to dial our power into any voltage we want. So say I want 15.1 volts. I can just dial her right in. Work on up there slowly, and there we are. So, yeah, this thing works. The knobs these 10 turns come with are these big screw-on types, but the less that this thing gets bumped, the better off we are anyway. So, and it's sitting there holding at 15.1 volts. So, turn it back down. I was running it at, right at 15. So I like it. Perfect little project.